so thank you again for everyone's time and attention. Um, I know this this is a busy group uh, with a, a lot of folks who um, have a lot of responsibilities and their attention is pulled in quite a few directions. So I, 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 we appreciate the consideration here. Um, this is the same presentation that was sent over uh, for review with some minor um, changes to fix uh, a couple of things that were identified during the back and forth, um, the emails with Barry. Um, so uh, we'll get right to it, and I will try and address um, some of the uh, comments and considerations that uh, have already been provided about this in the course of it. Um, so the the way that this started was the BFO um, in its current form we've been working with for quite some time, um, and the MathO and the FizO ontologies were sent over, and we were exposed to some of the IOF's current work vectors and um, we we weren't asked for feedback, but we've had a lot of thoughts for a lot of uh, uh, for a long time. <clears throat> so we've tried to organize those and to communicate with you. And our our goal in these communications is is not to simply criticize. We we want to learn. We want to understand. Um, and if our questions and conclusions are valid, we hope to motivate change within the BFO and its subsequent iterations and. Uh, uh, to hopefully inform some of the IOF working group uh, directions. Um, so with, resp with respect to the BFO, it boils down to quantity versus quality, um, which was discussed at length in some of these emails, uh, material versus immaterial entities, which the uh, delineation of which um, became um, less useful as we got into more and more domains, and then the subjectivity of object aggregates or perceived subjectivity. Um, so this is this is something that we're looking to understand a little bit more. And then we get into the systems engineering working group specifically talking about the classification of systems um, and, and how they relate within the BFO. And then there's also some matho and physo considerations. We're going to try and get through this uh, in 20 minutes as fast as we can. So regarding the BFO, everyone's very familiar, or, or at least we assume everyone is. Here's the basic breakdown of the continuance. And when using this, our biggest problems that we've encountered have been here. It's been material versus immaterial, object versus object aggregate, uh, and the qualities, uh, the quantification of qualities. Um, this has been these three in particular have been specifically difficult. Um, so, uh, and again, this is one place where minor changes were made uh, since the submitted uh, version of the presentation. Um, so when we talk about qualities and quantities, quantities are currently considered an instance of qualities. And uh, they're in, in OWL, there is very little um, differentiation uh, between instances of classes and, and and subclasses it's just a different way to handle it but so can i just clarify that the quantities are a subclass of sorry some quantities are a subclass of qualities not an instance and some quantities are a subclass of characteristics which is our name for qualities of processes Hmm. So the, the continuum quantities form a subclass of qualities, not so the, instances. Point, point taken. Our bigger issue was the quantity being a subclass of quality. Um, when when you think about um, happy is happy plus happy equals what. Um, the the distinction uh, between qualities and quantities seems uh, greater than what can be described by a a subclass relationship. Um, so the, and, the the subclass just comes about uh, according to whether the quality, such as length or temperature, can be measured or or counted. That's the sole difference. So from the very beginning of BFO, we've allowed length and area and so forth to be qualities. And now when we come to uh, think more carefully about physics, we realize that some of those qualities are new, are countable on, or uh, can be associated with uh, numeric measures. And so we created a subclass. 
And um, so we need to me- be able to measure length if we're going to do justice to what length is, and length is a quality. Completely agree that we need to be able to measure it and the the quantification of um, what is what is currently being referred to as qualities is certainly important and necessary. Uh, we provided in the previous email a definition for quantity. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll have a moment uh, to take a look at that definition and uh, poke holes in it um, when you can. We haven't provided definitions for everything as requested. Um, if if the the ultimate if if the ultimate decision is to leave quantity under quality as a subclass and to continue on this way, we don't think it's necessarily a significant problem, but we'd like to bring this up for additional consideration in the subsequent iterations of the BFO uh, because having having qualities or subclasses of qualities being siblings in a taxonomy to quantities seems ill-defined and if it, it, dr smith you you asked specifically to speak in terms of definitions which is why it's taken us so long to get back to you because we don't want to provide anything that is ill-formed um our, our our big point here that there's no way we'll get through in the, the the 20 minutes is that the quantities being siblings with subclasses of qualities does not to our perspective and intent for use seem complete um and and if and I, it's our, not of course because there are some a current quantity such as velocity and so forth so uh, but let me just point out that uh, this is not a uh, ground on which we should do battle, mm-hmm. uh, because quantity is not a term in BFO. Uh, it is a term and a treatment that we proposed in the paper on Fizzo and Matho, but that paper is a very, very early draft. Mm-hmm. It It might take years before we produce what we are all happy with. And it might deviate a lot from that early draft. The reason it's going to take a long time is because we're trying to deal with physics and we're trying to deal with um, quantum physics and general relativity theory, as well as with the kind of classical physics which underlies BFO. Mm. And we just don't know how to do that. Is is there a specific reason that you assert quantity should not be uh, a sibling category or sibling term to quality? Well, the the main reason, so as I say, this is not a ground on which we should do battle because quantity is not a term in BFO, but my intuition tells me that length is a quality and that length is also a quantity. And so that means that length is an example of one quantity which is also a quality and since there are many qualities which are not quantities it follows that quantity is a good candidate for being a subclass of quality it's not uh, it's not going to be acceptable to do that precisely because of a current quasi qualities which we call characteristics which also are quantifiable and so we say that some quantities are qualities, some quali- quantities are characteristics, and some quantities, and this is for uh, de- consideration down the road, are going to be neither of those things because they do not fall within the domain of BFO because they're not quantities belonging to classical physics. They belong to quantum physics or general relativity theory. The treatment of time in general relativity theory is completely skewed to the treatment of time in BFO. So we can't have temporal region in in, uh, BFO used to deal with temporal, with with, with what uh, general relativity theory uh, uh, calls uh, time or time intervals or time regions. They're just so so strange and so uh, radically different that we have to leave that for the future. 
in in the interest of time, uh, we'll we'll move on to the next point. But I I completely agree that um we this is not a place on a, a ground on which we should do battle. Uh, we will concentrate our questions and inquiries in the subsequent emails, uh, into a a definition perspective on why uh quantity is not considered possible within the BFO. Um, that, that I think is the, the inquiry route that, that we'll pursue in the near term and may ultimately so be persuaded that we're wrong. For, for quantity for non-classical physics is what I was referring to. I think quantity for classical physics, like length and velocity can be treated in BFO terms. Although that doesn't mean that the term quantity will be added to BFO. It may be though we put it in the IOF core or in the common core ontologies, we're, we're not made a decision on that yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the perspective. Um, this is con this concerns the material versus immaterial. So when we started, we were creating a, a, a domain ontology for prognostic health management and spacecraft avionics. I, I've worked in uh, space radiation effects for quite some time and have a degree of expertise in the the causation and effects of uh, particle radiation in space. And while the standard model is by no means complete and uh, many, mo no, most physicists understand that it is wrong, though we do not understand why or how it is wrong just yet. That's what most of the experimental physics at the moment concerns. The taxonomy of the standard model in its current form and possible future forms has subclasses with both material and immaterial terms. The example for this is the uh, bosons, uh, gauge bosons in particular, which contains both photons, which do not have mass, and other gauge bosons, which would do have mass and doesn't super matter what they are um this is where we encountered the most problems taxonomizing these independent continuance clearly independent continuance uh under the delineation of material versus immaterial and so we, we've emailed back and forth a, a bit about this between providing this presentation and um presenting it now uh and uh, D dr smith has uh, provided perspective on the future of of this um, and I, I believe we're in agreement that material and immaterial could use some polishing. Would, would you care to comment? Yeah, so I think it's of parallel to our issues regarding quantities. So the reason why we didn't consider things like bosons in BFO was because we were considering BFO as a an ontology which would deal with the what we might call the empirical world or the world that we experience around us, which includes factories and machines and uh, raw materials used in factories. And it includes um, uh, things moving with, with smallish velocities uh, and having smallish lengths and so forth. We, we didn't, we didn't, we were not ambitious with regard to BFO in claiming that it would also be able to deal with quantum physics and with uh, particle physics and with general relativity theory. We are now finally reaching the point where we are trying to work out how BFO should deal with those things. And the experimental idea presented in the Matho Fizzo paper is that uh, BFO should stick with classical physics and it should leave those more controversial parts of contemporary physics for a separate ontology to be called FISO. And FISO and BFO would be linked because practically everything in physical experimentation, including experimentation in quantum physics, for instance, does fall within BFO. So the, the equipment used to the, the uh, schoen gerlach equipment, for instance, um, that's that falls within BFO. It's it's a material entity. Now, you, you, Michael, uh, you made a very important point uh, in our interchange, which I think we have to think about very carefully. So BFO claims to be a top level ontology. Our 
strategy as presented in the FISO paper gives up the idea that BFO will be a top-level ontology. Uh, and it says BFO is for one part of the universe and FISO is for another part of the universe in some strange sense of part. I am, I, I'm not happy with that um, outcome, uh, but I still don't know what the correct way of, of solving the problem of immaterial entities like bosons, which are not counted as entities within BFO because they're just not within the world that BFO wants to deal with. So there are two options. Either we become more modest about BFO's claims to be a top level ontology, yeah. or we find a way of having BFO have a, a non-classical physics branch. And um, I don't, I just don't know what that will look like. And it, it will, the second uh, avenue will indeed involve removing the cu current definition of immaterial entity from BFO. So you have raised a, a, an important point which we need to address. That's the, the philosophy of how the problem was approached is incredibly useful per perspective. And in the discussions of how this possibly may be remediated, the uh, a a parameter, a measure called the Knudsen number, K N U D S E N number, was uh, discussed, which in fluid dynamics describes at what point, at what length scales, do what are called continuum mechanics break down. And generally, that is when you get to the atomic, subatomic levels and below, and the very, very large structures, uh, galactic and intergalactic web type structures where the physics does again change. So it sounds like the original BFO um, taxonomy of continuance was squarely in what many engineers and physicists would describe the continuum mechanics region. And then when we approach this problem with the gauge bosons, we are squarely in subcontinuum mechanics. So it, I, I certainly have uh, no sense of if this would be the appropriate solution or useful, but a possible solution may be to address continuance based on the scale of what kind of physics we are talking about, subcontinuum, continuum, and the the grand structures, which I do not think is the right way to say it, um, but can the the concept of tangible continuum identity may be useful in the taxonomy of different structures where material versus immaterial is directly relevant for continuum structures, and it's in subcontinuum where you get to uh, the breakdown of material versus immaterial being less relevant. Um, it, Knudsen does yeah, have to so do I, with the mo I, molecules specifically. I think that you're uh, you're you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, so we need to do something like what you just said. Uh, I, I I just off the top of my head, this would mean creating a new top level term, or a new understanding of the top level term entity, and then having two children. Uh, in the continuum hierarchy, I'm not sure what this would do to the, the current hierarchy, but for the continuum hierarchy, we would have two new children. One, one, um, one child would be continuance, for which we would need another name. So, a uh, kn Knudsen um, meso level or something continuant, and then Knudsen micro level continuant would be another top level term. And the, then everything... the, Knudsen, the Knudsen number is specific to molecules, and here we are talking about below yeah, mo yeah. So molecules. We, we it's a, sort of the concept. We would need an expression for that dichotomy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would come to the same thing as having a separate physo as a child, of, as, a, as a sibling ontology of BFO. Uh, so we're really putting L entity at, uh, and, hold, and, and merging those two into one single tree is a bit of a trick. Uh, but it would preserve BFO as a top-level ontology, which it, it probably is a useful thing to have. Um, I, I don't there presume are, there they have the answers. There are many, many issues, however. So um, 
Uh, I don't think I want to go into those issues here, but still, uh, we're on the same page, uh, I, I think. Wonderful. Um, I think we are uh, past this this next slide. Um, again, I don't presume to have the answers. We don't have the solutions here, uh, and we are we are merely presenting problems, and we hope they are not taken as simple criticisms. We we hope to work with the team and not um, not not against it here. Uh, the this is something that we we discuss in the the interchange as well, and uh, this like like quality and quantity this this may be something where we um, ultimately capitulate. We're persuaded that we're wrong, but at the moment we find object versus object aggregate to have a. Uh, severe and insurmountable context dependence. Um, and this this is from our uh, attempt to use these concepts. Um, in the the interchange, uh, it was described, of course, um, the, uh, the the ship of Theseus, we all know the the story of identity, all the the boards get replaced and you know, the the crew gets replaced. Is it the same ship? The concept of someone's identity is not the same as the composition of their atoms. Um, and when the 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 point or perspective that I offered was that is a rock an object, you know, pick pick your independent continuum here. Is a rock an object or is a rock a composition of the atoms in the rock? And both could be true depending on the context of how you're trying to use it, which therein lies the problem from our perspective. Both are relevant. You do need to be able to describe both, but you can describe a rock having the composition of its set of atoms in some lattice organization without the context dependence of object aggregate. So we at the moment are not persuaded object aggregate is useful and there are implications for where system is taxonomized for the IOF systems engineering working group. I, I would love to hear the, the commentary and perspective here. Okay, so the I, I don't really understand what you mean by subjective. To me, it's very clear. So let's not choose rock. Let's choose organism. So we'll take a human being as an object in BFO. There is, wherever you have a human being, an aggregate in the BFO sense of cells. And so every human being coincides, roughly speaking, with an object aggregate of cells. It doesn't coincide exactly because there are parts of human beings which are not made of cells. Uh, the, the intercellular or the digestive tract is uh, as a, a whole running through the length of the human being is often regarded as being a part of the human being, but it's not made of cells. So we have the human being and we have the aggregate of cells and they are and it context free distinguish. And whenever you lose, uh, well, no, let, let me then move down to the next level. And this level of a uh, series of levels or series of perspectives for viewing any given object is discussed at length in the BFO uh, literature. So this is not something new. So, and that a, a human being is also made up of molecules. And so we can say that wherever we have a human being as an object, we also have an aggregate of molecules. It's not, however, again, quite coincident with the human being. It's never identical because an aggregate of molecules is one thing and an object is another thing. Um, it's not identical because, again, the digestive tract is not made of molecules. And then we can move down to atoms and we could even move down to subatomic particles. All of this is completely objective. It's going to be necessary when you deal with machines versus aggregates of machine parts or with raw materials versus aggregates of um, uh, con constituent uh, parts of raw materials, which are 
uh, going to be uh, drawn out of the whole collection of raw materials that as you uh, manufacture things using those raw materials. So we need object aggregate. We need other kinds of aggregates too, which we have not documented and which we must uh, document in due course. Um, and I don't see anything subjective here at all. It's a sub is the a scale dependent classification, but not of the same thing. Is the purpose of object aggregate solely to express composition? Well, um, so composition is not so easy. Uh, I am an object aggregate of cell. Uh, sorry, let me start this again. There is over here on this chair an object aggregate of cells. I This object aggregate is constantly losing cells and constantly gaining cells, but it's still the same object aggregate. And that's one big difference between object aggregates and sets in the mathematical sense. Sets in the mathematical sense are defined by their elements. Object aggregates are such that they can gain and lose elements um, without well, changing. And there so we're talking about... There we talk about cardinality, uh, a set having cardinality, which may be dynamic or static. Or well, no, that... in mathematical terms, sets. Uh, so if a set A has such and such members at one time, and, and some of those members cease to exist or for one reason or another are not in the context uh, at issue, uh, then it's a different set. Sets are defined by their members, not by the cardinality of their members. Object aggregates are defined neither by the cardinality of their members nor by their members, because an object aggregate can gain and lose parts and be the same aggregate. So an example we like is the example of a stamp collection. You have a stamp collection and it grows over time. It's the same collection, but it has more and more members. And this is all defined in the BFO uh, documentation um, that we're trying to create a, an axiom set which will hold up the object aggregate definition. It's quite difficult because in set theory, you gain a lot of clarity by having this identity is defined by your members rule. Uh, we, if you don't have that rule, then you have questions, for instance, Supposing that we have a stamp collection and I begin my stamp collection, it, 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 I begin to sell stamps to other people. And eventually I only have one stamp left. Do I still have a collection? In other words, do I still have an object aggregate? And we say, yes, an object aggregate with one member is a perfectly good aggregate, provided the object aggregate had more members at some earlier time. Okay, so is understanding that one stamp is still an object aggregate? Uh, my previous question was: Does object ag is the intent of object aggregate to solely express composition? I now amend that question it to: Is object aggregate intended to express composition at all? Um, we, in in system hierarchies, we have to express compositional hierarchies. Um, in yeah. system L, these are generally block definition diagrams. Yeah. Where does that compositional hierarchy fall, and is it under object aggregate? Actually, I think it will be under object aggregate, but it, it will then be under what we what we might call element aggregate, and that takes us beyond object aggregates, and this is what I said earlier, that there are other kinds of aggregates. Element aggregate would be another kind of aggregate because not every element is an object in a system hierarchy. I'm, if I'm, I'm not understanding. Convinced. So I'm not as I understand it, uh, so <laughs> it, it, let me just explain my understanding, which may be quite wrong. So. The simplest kind of system is going to be a collection or aggregate of elements. But then there will be more complicated kinds of systems of systems where the elements of the system of system is a system rather than an element in the simple uh, or element sense. 
Now, if that's correct, then we need a theory of element aggregation, which will allow both elements in the or element sense and systems to be aggregated. And we have not worked out the mathematics of that kind of uh, aggregate definition. But we, we do state in the documentation that the object aggregate definitions, which include a definition of membership, which is the important part of that treatment, uh, need to be extended to allow uh, other kinds of aggregates to be defined. And a system aggregate or element aggregate, which includes systems among the elements, would be one example of a new kind of definition. Point point taken, and uh, the the problem that I see uh, with the co compositional hierarchy existing as as a subclass or some form of subclass uh, under or near object aggregate is the material dependence, and it does it goes back to the material versus immaterial. Um, if just as a set would be some generically dependent continuant. Um, under some information entity, uh, a compositional hierarchy like a set does not necessarily have to be material. Um, the the yeah, uh, so, it, it it may be under generically dependent continuum itself, which I'll I'll you know um, we yeah but this is I'll this, try there are many up, long but, stories here. Yeah, let let me try and create uh, just one. Uh, track through this complicated set of questions. So I don't know what your position is on system, but in the IOF, uh, and specifically in the systems working group, we have been working on the assumption that all systems are material entities. And we can rephrase that by saying, we are only going to be interested in those systems which are material entities, or more precisely, those systems which are either immediately or ultimately uh, defined on the basis of physical elements. So we're not interested in the decimal system or the Library of Congress catalog system. We're only interested in natural material systems such as the Earth's weather system or artificial material systems such as uh, an engine or a laptop or uh, a, a train or the, the kinds of systems that IOF deals with? Certainly. Um, our biggest, uh, the, the thing, our biggest recommendation, the thing we are most persuaded about out of all of this is that a system, understanding that a system, whether it is natural or physical, it is a software system or or whatever comprises and expresses that system, systems can be described in terms of functions, capabilities, use cases, behaviors, states, modes, requirements, verification, reliability, integration. Those are all inherent aspects of systems. Well, and I, the relations so I, from systems just... to those can be expressed. We are strongly persuaded that system should exist under role, not object yeah. aggregate. So let, let, let me uh, just uh, pause for a minute. So I think you agree that there would be natural systems on the one hand and engineered systems on the other hand. I don't think it makes sense to talk about requirements for natural systems. Can you not uh, I'm I'm not convinced that natural should be a prefix for a subclass and may be more apt as a quality for that because you can engineer a natural system. I'm not convinced engineered should be a prefix either. Well, uh, all right. So we the, the, your right, remark about roles reveals that we are talking at cross purposes here. So let let's let's think about this. I will tell you how we would try and do justice to what I believe are your intuitions concerning roles, because there is a uh, uh, that, that there are certain ways in which we talk about systems in which what, what looks very much like roles do seem to be in place. So let me try and express what you are getting at when you say things like that. So we have a. Um, 
uh, a planet with lots of molecules and lots of um, uh, people and lots of buildings and lots of railway tracks and lots of oceans and so forth uh, called the Earth. And it would it would not be sensible for a scientist to who wants to understand what's going on on the Earth to create a single system which would contain all the elements which are relevant to what's going on on the Earth. It would be impossible. It would be way too complicated. The in order to do science of any sort with a complex uh, phenomenon or entity like the Earth, you need to divide your targets. You need to choose certain kinds of elements and certain kinds of inter interactions and then say you're going to work out scientifically how this system with these elements and these interactions works. And if we're talking, we're not talking about engineering now, we're talking about natural systems, but something similar would apply in engineering. If you want to understand how a, um, a Stern Gerlach machine works, then you're not going to spend very much time looking at the subatomic particles in the wheels. Uh, which enable the machine to be moved to different parts of the lab. You're going to be looking at those parts, uh, those elements within the stern gerlach machine, which work in ways relevant to your scientific inquiry. So when we are dealing with systems in the world, we always select. We select elements, we select interactions, and then we study the system which, which results from examining those elements in those interactions. And the element set or the element aggregate might grow over time as we discover that the, the interactions extend uh, be, for whatever reason. And so the selection is not necessarily determinate from one time to the next. It may be that the system itself grows or it may be that the system itself proves to have more elements that we hadn't noticed in the first place. Now that sounds very much like creating uh, a role view of certain parts of a larger whole. So if we take the planet again, we're only interested in the Brazilian railway system. And so we create the role, object of scientific interest role for all the elements uh, and all the uh, well, we the, all the, all the elements, the tracks, the trains, the passengers, and so forth, which are relevant to our study of the Brazilian railway system. Now, I think that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but that it doesn't follow from that that the system is a role. All it means is that defining systems involves assigning roles to certain kinds of elements, namely the role of being part of the selection which led to this particular system being picked out for scientific purposes. If, if I'm designing an object aggregate of a Brazilian railway system, or what will be a Brazilian railroad system, I have the compositional elements that comprise that railway. I have uh, allocated requirements to it that I know this railway must have functions and capabilities, behaviors, use cases, states, modes, um, some form of integration, some concept of reliability. And through its relation to those, would that object aggregate not assume the role of system? Um, so my assumption is that object the object aggregate will be the system in virtue of the fact that the elements and we'll, we'll just talk about one level of system we won't talk about systems of systems yet the elements of that system have the role of being elements of that system you have the role of being a participant in this discussion Oh, and and the, the discussion between you and me now uh, looks very much like the interactions of a very simple system, which has you and me as its elements, and which where the interactions are the uh, the expressions of thoughts. Now that doesn't mean that the system here is a role, nor does it mean that you are a role or that I 
am a role. Rather, you have a role and I have a role, and thereby the system exists, which is you in that role, if you like, and me in that other role, if you like. And that's why the role notion is relevant to the system discussion. But that's not because a system is a role. I think the 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 underlying disconnect is that these things a a brazilian railway system or uh, a uh, business uh, interaction um and the the a a company that builds terrariums that that engineers natural systems the fundamental disconnect is that in at present uh the iof is considering uh, object aggregates to inherently be systems. Things are systems immediately. That they are being designed as such. That is is what they are. But what what we argue here is that these object aggregates are not systems until you start treating them like systems through system definition, architecture, and integration verification processes. There are analysis, inspection, demonstration, test, interface definitions. When you start formally treating them like systems, that is when they can be described as systems. They are not inherently systems. So if they become systems by virtue of how you treat them and they are not materially changed by the treatment, that would assert them as roles, would it not? No, no. So I agree with everything you say. I just think that you're using role in a non-BFO sense. So a lawyer is not a role. A lawyer is a person with a role. A system is not a role. A system is a collection of elements with a role, if you like. It, so do you think a lawyer is a role or a student? I think vocations are roles. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But <laughs> so I, again, I think that we are fighting over a, a relatively minor issue about the, uh, the, 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 the the interpretation of the term role. And Relative, I, I haven't made minor. this point yet, but it's a point which I will uh, make uh, because I think, that, well, you, you know that this point, that I'm repeating myself from your purposes, but BFO has been around for 20 years. We've been defining things as carefully as we can, and these definitions have gone through an enormously painful sequence of critiques from uh, bloody-minded uh, friends and enemies of BFO. <laughs> and we've survived with a set of definitions which work very well and which thousands of people now are using. And you come along and you say, no, I want role to be used in a different way. And we, we, we don't know what to say to this. We really like what you're doing. It's very helpful to work with you already. But you can't just come along and say, no, role should mean this. It, th that's not how the game is played. The game is well, played by you formulating what you want to say, using the term role in the way that BFO defines the role. Otherwise, you will, you will just fail to become part of this community. It is, it is not our intent to, to change the way that role is defined. And it is certainly not our intent to create BFO light. We we want to use the BFO. We want to understand it. We want to be a part of the community, most certainly unequivocally. Um, and and I hope I hope that our our inquiries and our our perspectives do not come off as dismissive of the importance and relevance of the BFO. We are uh, by virtue of our um, I'm I'm 30, but I'll say youth. <laughs> Um, uh, we're less experienced in this arena. So we have had obviously less time to deal with these concepts and to understand them. However, because of our youth, we, we certainly understand the BFO has uh, been around for 20 years. It has survived thousands of criticisms and is used by thousands of people, but use, 
the the implications of the small difference between role and object aggregate has big uh, results. If if system goes under object aggregate or role, that has significant implications that will propagate throughout the rest of its the BFO's use. And while we respect certainly that it has BFO has thousands of users and has survived thousands of criticisms, we would like to caution that there is not a sunk cost fallacy that the BFO or IOF ideas may be unwilling to change due to the fact that it has survived so long. Okay, um, so let, let me just push you a little bit. You say a system is a role. You agree that a system has elements. Mm -hmm. Are elements parts of roles? I think a system element is a role. Yes, that some compositional no, no, hierarchy. Is a, so if a system is a role and an element is a part of a system, then it follows that an element is part of a role. Could you say that again? Yeah. If a system is a role and a system has elements as parts, mm -hmm. then it follows that elements are parts of a role. I do not assert system element to be a subclass of system. No, no, it's a a system element is a part of a system. Compositionally, yes. Okay, so whatever sense of part you like, you are asserting that system elements are parts of roles. System elements are roles. But so okay, so if a system element is a role, then you're saying that a system element is a, itself a role and is part of another role. From this, we can infer that a system element is part of a role. Now that sure. doesn't correspond to the way we normally. So a, an example of a system element might be something like a molecule. Yes. I. Um, I system elements uh, would be would be constrained by the same constraints applied to systems, such that you can apply requirements and uh, uh, states and modes and functions and capabilities. Okay, so, I have a so, hard time saying molecules would be a system element. Okay, then person, a person can be a system element. Yeah, a person could be a system element within an enterprise system, yes. Good. And so if the enterprise system is the system at issue, and if that system is a role, which all systems are according to your view, then it follows that a person can be a part of a role. Sure. Now that's That's not the way we use role in BFO. A person has a role. And we can say everything that we want you want to say in BFO terms just by saying that a system is a collection of elements uh, with a role. I'm I'm simplifying at the moment, but it, it will work for this purpose. Each of those system elements has a role, and uh, that role includes being one of the elements of this system. But the system itself is not a role, and the element is not a role. It has a role. Just as a lawyer is not a role, a lawyer has a role. Point taken, I think I would have agreed had you said as a role rather than is a role pri previously. But what I'm hearing is... I, I, I should the, have said the, that previously. If I didn't, then I was, it was a slip of the tongue. Systems are... Sorry, roles are defined as being specifically dependent, con realizable continuance, which in here in independent continuance, like people or planets, if if there was to 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 hearken to the the previous example, if there was a company that was developing terrariums, and I and you are uh, putting some requirements on that terrarium, and it it is some natural system there, the the glass and the sphagnum moss and any bugs in there, the the entire terrarium would have the role of system. 
and the glass yeah. and the bugs, have, they would have, have the, the role. role. I'm agreeing. It would have the role. It wouldn't be the role. They would have the role of system elements. Good. So we agree. We can use role terminology to describe systems by pointing out that certain systems have certain roles, not that they are those roles. Certainly agree there. Okay, if then we, are, we, a, we finished. We're done. We agree. The IOF currently has system under object aggregate. Yeah, which has a role. So system is a subclass of object aggregate and there is a role of system? Yeah, of course. The, 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 we take the elements that we choose to form our system and we're talking now about Systems which actually exist, not systems which are being designed and so mm -hmm. forth. That's another story which is is also not going to be solved by viewing systems as roles. So we take the elements. That's an object aggregate. We want to treat it as a system. So it acquires a role, the role of being a system. This, But it's not the system which is the role. It has the role of being a system. Just as when you appoint, uh, when you give your certificate to a lawyer, he acquires the role of lawyer. He doesn't become a role. He acquires the role. I think you should just agree. <laughs> just um, for, I, we only I, have I, five I, minutes left. Right, right, right. I th I, I agree. Um, most of what the rest of the the presentation includes. Um, uh, covers what we what we've already discussed here and had so, um, some conceptual versus the, physical. Can you go back two slides there? System role arose role that inheres in an entity in virtue of its being an arrangement of parts. Uh, I the, I think this is uh, a good definition of what you're getting at with system role. I, I certainly agree. Sys system role may be the appropriate way to define the concept of, of systems under roles. Our no, our bigger no, our bigger no. our, our, no. my bigger systems point is that have roles. Sure, I may have misspoke. My bigger point is that systems may not be taxonomized themselves. We can describe systems, but I'm not sure that trying to taxonomize it, the wide, wide world of what could and could not be a system under an independent continuant of system is the right way to go. That is the idea that I'm hoping to bring to the surface of the group, that having a independent continuant somewhere defined a system and then taxonomizing systems under there that, so that me, may me, ultimately present problems. Let me uh, explain what we're doing and then I will agree with you that it may ultimately present problems because everything ultimately may present problems. So we start with natural systems such as the weather system of the earth and so forth and engineered systems such as the Brazilian railway system. And we define them as collections of elements uh, which uh, interact in certain ways. And that means that there's a selection. And what that means is that we are assigning, in a way, certain roles to these elements. They're not just pieces of metal. They are pieces of metal that form parts of, of railway tracks in Brazil. And we're assuming in both of those cases that the system actually exists. So it's a, it falls within the realm of independent continuance just like lawyers and uh, students do. And it, the, the elements have roles in virtue of the fact that they are part of the Brazilian railway system. Now, the problem is that there are many places where we want to deal with systems which are not in the independent continued world, but rather they are in the world of design or planning. They're in the future, for instance, or there may be in the realm of simulations. Um, and there you can't use independent continuance. There it may be that you have some you, to use something like GDCs. We'll see. We haven't got that far. And it may be that when we do get that far, we move in a direction which is closer to your 
uh, role idea. But I hope that for the weather system and the Brazilian railway system, at least, you will agree once and for all that they are not roles. They rather, well, the Brazilian railway system has a role. I'm not sure about the weather system. Even the weather system has a role in the sense that we pick out certain interactions and certain elements as forming the weather system. We could have picked others. The, the advocacy that we make, I, I, I believe the, the s summarized way to say it is that the IOF should consider creating a taxonomy of system role, but not a taxonomy of system. Yeah, so we've got already come quite a long way with our working group. Uh, so I think we, we you, you, what you should do is criticize some of the things that we already have. And then conceivably, your know, criticisms will be so powerful that we will change some things. <laughs> but what we're not going to change is the meaning of role. So that, roles certainly. are things like lawyer role. A lawyer is not a role. And the system is not a role. It has a role. Well, we're willing to accept something along those terms, I'm sure. We, the, our time will tell, of course. But... We we shall back up and evaluate our, our perceived use of role. There is only one short final point that we would like to make um, that we believe to be relevant to the MathO, FISO, and the MBSC and SE ontologies that IOF has been working on. This FISO is... Just one example of this, but this point can be made for all of the domain ontologies we've seen so far. All of these domain ontologies that we have seen have started with a single domain-specific root entity. This is not considered the root entity of the full ontology. It's the, the only root entity, per se, exists in the TLO. But the domain ontologies for physics start with physics entity. The domain ontology for math starts with math entity. The one that we saw for systems engineering that Gen Z showed was, uh, I think, systems engineering entity. We argue that this is not the appropriate development methodology, that domain. there is no reason that domain ontologies need start with one uh, root entity because each of these wherever they may lie if they are approved and decided upon and um, published um, and peer-reviewed critiqued and ultimately successful there's they would not fall under the same single term these would be split under some section of the bfo they would go other places and this is the same for math and physics and systems engineering we, in our limited participation with the IOF and our um, dubious understanding of certain BFO terms, uh, certainly, we do not understand why these domain ontologies are being developed with a single root entity. Can yeah, anyone so comment on that? that? Yeah, I think that you've hit a nail on the head, uh, but the nail is there only for show. It's only to show that these all form part of the same ontology. The entity term in BFO doesn't play any role in any kind of axiom. Um, then the physics entity here doesn't play any role. It, it just It's just a convenient way of bundling together those three children. Uh, I don't think it does any harm, but it doesn't do much good either. It's purely for show. Well, it may be purely for show, but if... If you don't start, I, I, you mentioned in the email that the BFO uh, should only be used by the people who need to see it. But if you make your taxonomies of, you know, here, system entity, magnitude, model, and, you know, any potential, potential problems with them notwithstanding, uh, putting them under a BFO term may ultimately result in some subclass of, say, system entity yeah. going somewhere else under the BFO. Why yeah, I not agree. start it, there? It, yeah, yeah. It, it's going to have problems as soon as we start talking about system entities in other domains. Uh, but so far, we've assumed that all systems are going to be physical. 
it's and we, in, I, I hope we're going to hold on to that in some sense. Even a software system, in my view, is physical. There, there is a general principle in in kind of more advanced systems engineering theory of specified design build test fix. It is the common way that businesses, enterprises build systems, specify design, build, test, fix. And the problem with it is the fix part. You have to go back and fix it later, which ultimately results in more time, money, resources. Specify design, build, test, fix has no discernible outcome other than finish on time and under budget and then fix it later. We argue that while you can come back and put this under BFO when necessary, that's just going to result in more time, effort, and work for this yeah, group. So, Start with the BFO. So we we put this physio uh, taxonomy. It's a very, very small version of a very, very early idea. Uh, and we want it to be criticized. And we, we've learned something from your criticisms already. Um, but we have to start somewhere. Uh, we can't fix first and then build. Um, we have to start somewhere, and this is where we this, started. This is not a criticism of Fizzo. This is, I'll, I'll use the word criticism, but like I love the work everyone's doing. Um, th this is a criticism of the way these domain ontologies are being developed within the IOF. If you start with the BFO and then put the terms under them and then your domain ontology can have multiple, I'll say, root entities for the domain ontology. You don't have to go back and fix yeah, it I later, think that you're, and you'll have a better you, understanding. Yeah. You're drawing conclusions from this slide here and from similar slides, like the Matho well, slide. On the, the Matho, uh, uh, all of these are actually, under mathematical entity, too. Uh, but actually, if you look at the domain ontology work that's going on within the IOF and within other foundries, uh, we are not making the mistake that you suppose. So the gene ontology has three root nodes, for instance. And the gene ontology, gene is, ontology is great. Is the is the uh, the masterpiece in all of this work? Yes. So yes, yes, yes. I think that you are uh, you're worrying about a, a, a problem which actually, when you examine what's on the ground, is not such a big problem. I don't think it will ultimately be the pro be a problem because it would be fixed later before an you know, ultimate integration and whatever holistic uh, suite of ontologies exists. This is more to say that if the work continues with single root nodes and then reorganization later, it'll just take more time. That, yeah, that's so all this I don't think says. there will ever be an ultimate tree which cont contains BFO at the top or BFO plus at the top and all the domain ontologies neatly binned underneath it. That will never work, and we shouldn't even aim for that. Uh, but anyway, can I, can we should I understand stop. why we should stop. Oh, okay, because, I'll, I'll I'll follow up on that. I'll... Yeah, it it because it it's uh, it it won't work uh, because there are too many diff. There are too. If you might say that it has to do with context, uh, what biologists mean by um, cell, for instance, is different from what uh, prison uh, administrators mean by cell. Uh, that's a trivial kind of uh, example, but the, it would just be too complicated to have a universal ontology of ontologies. What we can have, we hope, is a single top-level ontology which everyone can share. But then as we go down, we'll get into more and more problems when we try to build interactions. Uh, I so I, the, you're more ambitious the perspective. Than, than we are. Um, <laughs> well, I have a lot to learn. So an, an expert someone who's made all the mistakes as possible, and I'm not an expert here yet. So hopefully I can right. make those mistakes soon. Good. Thank you for so, the time and the attention. I really appreciate just the time of day uh, from this group. Um, and So it, it strikes you. me it might be a good idea to put this discussion on YouTube. Would you agree? I, I would have no qualms. So, Jim, are you still there? Can you, uh, either you yourself or I would do it, put this on YouTube? If anyone is still there, yeah. So I'm here. Yes, I thought I was. I thought I was speaking uh, off of mute. Yes, I'd be happy okay. to do that. Um, Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Michael and Barry, for this exchange. It's a shame we kind of ran out of time here and had to hurry. Yeah. Um, let me know if you'd like to continue this discussion next week. 
I think probably we uh, should uh, try and harvest some results so that we're not arguing yes. over the same ground. So, so uh, it, briefly, um, my next two months are hell. <laughs> I have some a very bad October, and then there's two papers. Uh, one is specifically on Dr. Dr. Smith, some of the ontolog ontological questions that have been brought up here. If if we could, I would love to wait until early December to get you a fully fledged response to some of these questions. I know that's not ideal. It's not soon. I I have limited bandwidth for the immediate future, and then no we'll problem. be working on this almost exclusively for my PhD dissertation. So um, it's not that I'm leaving this and won't come back. Things are going to get bad for me in the very near term and then better. Good. So I'll, I'll send a short email okay. to everyone, but it won't have the definitions that were requested in the previous email. Good. Okay. So uh, Jinzi and I will talk and maybe if, if others uh, want to talk about it as well, uh, please send an email to the mailing list suggesting topics for the meeting next week. Um, and Jinzi and I, in absence of those messages, will come up with some topics for the agenda. So Very thanks good. again. This has been a really great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.